Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my driveway on take number like eight. <laughs> Today I will be building my L1 and hopefully L2 certification rocket, TSA Nightmare. First and foremost, when you're doing any rocketry, anything, especially high power rocketry, safety comes first. So you're going to probably be dealing with like acetones, resins, epoxies, fiberglass, maybe even carbon fiber. First things first, if there's one safety thing you wear, realistically respirator, but probably tied disposable uh, nitrile gloves or disposable gloves of any kind, but probably going to be nitrile. Uh, respirator. Uh, I'm dealing with like acetone. I'm going to be spray painting this thing. I'm going to be dealing with epoxy. I don't want that in my lungs. And this is probably number one, but again, gloves, depending on what you're doing, could also just be very important in general. If you don't need anything that's overkill, you can get just some of the cheap, like, uh, like they're almost like a fabric and they just have like a port on the front of the mask. You can get those as well. And then safety glasses of some kind. Again, you're dealing with things that are going to be sort of aerosols, things in the air. So these are actually goggles. They seal up against the face. They're from the Walt. Uh, I can't find these in stores anywhere, but you can get them off like Amazon. They're about 20 bucks versus normal just safety glasses. I think these are a lot better. That's PPE. That's the most important thing. It doesn't matter if your rocket is crap, if your rocket is the greatest thing ever, but now all of a sudden you have a bunch of health issues because you're not using PPE. I don't feel bad for you. So seriously, uh, take that take that seriously. It matters. Uh, you can build another rocket. You can't build another you yet. So let's get into some of the consumables that I'll be using. I have G5000 Rocket Poxy. You can get this from Mad Cow. You can get this from Apogee Rockets probably a lot of other places. I don't need this much. I got extra because I'm probably going to be building more than one rocket. Cups to mix it in, and I have a variety of popsicle sticks to mix it, uh, create fillets, spread it, that kind of thing. I also have a dowel to spread it and get it into places. We'll see that later. Um, I also have JB Weld. I'm using this on like the motor uh, housing. Because this is a big L1 rocket, but small L2 rocket. So a lot of heat can build up. And this is, even this, which is not their most temperature resistant, is more temperature resistant than this. So you really want to use this in some parts. Again, we'll get around to that. Acetone, uh, just in general, you're going to end up using it. Super glues. Not strictly necessary, but useful. Uh, if you do get super glue, get like these actual bottles. Um, I just got, these are like generic Hobby Lobby super glue. Um, not my not my beloved Bob Smith Industries, um, but get the actual uh, super glue. It's going to be better than those single use bottles, uh, just both in terms of cost. But you can also choose like the consistency. I have like two bottles of medium and one of thin. If you do a lot of planes, you probably get this because it like soaks into wood really well. Uh, I have debonder, so this is great if you make a mistake or if for some reason you do get some on your fingers, then you can use this and. It'll, won't get it all off, but it'll be enough that it won't be annoying and it'll come off probably by the end of the day. Of course, super glue, it's relatively safe. It was designed to seal wounds. Uh, you'll actually see this in like kitchens and stuff, people sealing up the wounds, but still try not to get it on you because it's just annoying. It's annoying. Uh, and then I have um, CA accelerant. Um, just one spritz of this and your super glue is gonna just start to set pretty much instantly. Uh, masking tape, uh, this is great for when you're trying to set regions where you do and don't want epoxy painting. All sorts of stuff. Uh, I Silver Sharpies. I love Silver Sharpies. Black Sharpies are great, don't get me wrong, or even colored ones. Um, but these are great because like, if I'm working on something with like metal, uh, if I'm working on like um, hot rolled steel, you can still see it. Just make sure you store them this way so it goes down. But super useful. And then chop towels for anything that I may be cleaning up. Um, these are probably not actually truly residue free, but I have a ton laying around. I really like them. So that's sort of the prep work here, or actually the list of the stuff I'm going to be doing for prep work. I'm going to have a lot of B-roll of me actually building this thing. So enjoy the video.
Uh, sorry for the uh, AC going on in the back room. I have the motor tube or the forward centering ring actually glued in. I'm using my fin jig and fins to uh, keep that centered. Also, I'm not wearing gloves, but I'm also not touching this thing. Um, I, my hands are just really sweaty, so I, I took my gloves off while I wait for this to cure for a little bit. That also helps keep it level. Uh, I intentionally designed it that way. I didn't film this because the JB Weld gets really, really tacky within about six minutes. Like, I really don't want to keep moving this kind of tacky in about six to ten minutes. So, um, I didn't really film that uh, in great detail, so I'm just sort of recapping it here. In probably about 10-15 minutes, I'm going to whip up some more JB Weld, and I'm actually going to uh, use it to um, glue the inside of the fins to the actual motor tube. Alright, so... the This has been curing for a little bit. The current plan is to use JB Weld on the inside of these fins mounting to the motor tube. I'm probably going to use regular epoxy if I can on the outside going to the actual uh, housing. Simply because I don't want to use up all my JB Weld. I'd like to have at least one extra one spare uh, tube. Um, and I don't need the temperature, temperature resistance quite as much on the outer tube. Um, so I'm not quite as worried about having the JB Weld there. Obviously I'm using regular epoxy everywhere else on the rocket. <laughs> New haircut dropped, so you know it's been a few days. Uh, and I've made a few mistakes along the way. So, it is now Wednesday, the day before I'm leaving for Hot Nozzle Summer. And the last part of the video that I recorded, I believe, was on Saturday. I don't think I did anything Sunday, recording-wise. It's not true. Uh, the whole drilling was Sunday. But that's not much. You may not even see that. So it's been a few days. Let's go over what happened. Uh, I did all my epoxying. Uh, I botched that really hard. Uh, I think it's uh, this one. One of these sides. We'll see it in a little bit here. Uh, did not really go very well. I put too much hardener in there, and between that and being baked in the sun, it got hard really quick. I couldn't get a good fillet. Uh, it, it just wasn't smooth enough. Did another batch, and there wasn't enough hardener, so it took a while to really stiffen up, but I got there. Uh, but I botched the tape. Uh, you can see some actually maybe here. The black helps cover it up, but the uh, surface here is not great on the actual rocket, on the fins. Nothing that's going to cause like a failure. It's still strong. It, the structural part is there. It just doesn't look good. Uh, so I botched that. Uh, moving on, uh, I drilled the holes in here for the camera. We will see that uh, during the flight. So I'm not going to give a spoiler in this video as to how the downward facing camera looks. Um, that actually went pretty well. That was probably the smoothest part of like the later part of the build. Maybe the smoothest part of the build. Uh, and then I got to painting. And painting is where things really went wrong. So the first hurricane of the season that really came through here came in early July, which is like a month early. And it's been nonstop rain basically since. Uh, like every day it has rained. It's been a chance of rain of like 70% or more. So it's the humidity here has been like 80%. So I go and I paint and I'm like, okay, you know, these are really good layers of paint. They look good. And I go and I get my paint on and I go and I spray clear coat and... It all peels up. I peeled tape off here, and it peeled up. This also did a lot of this ugly peeling here, like this almost scalloping. If it wasn't un, if I could intentionally do that, it almost looks cool. This part was supposed to be black as well, and it was supposed to like fade. You can see it, it sort of fades. I'm happy with this. The masking job went really well. The painting on this actually largely went well, except for the uh, primer peeled up in a few places. Okay, moving on from that. Let's take an overview of the actual rocket. So, this is the main tube. Good snug fit. Might actually need to sand that down a bit. It might not come off with the ejection charge. That is not coming off with the ejection charge. Ugh. Or maybe just flip it around. That would work too. There we go. Yeah, that needs a bit more sanding. That's fine. Uh, so, this is the main body. So this largely went well. 
Uh, I used JB Weld for pretty much the entire inside of this uh, construction because, again, I want to do L2 on here, and that's a lot of heat uh, for this size uh, body. So pretty much entirely JB Weld on the inside. The fillets, as ugly as they may be, again, you might you can see some epoxy here. Um, some here where I had my fin alignment. Those uh, kind of screwed up. It's not going insanely high. Like I'm not worried about the aerodynamics that much other than they're straight and I don't know how good of a view you'll be able to get here. These are incredibly straight. My fin jigs did an amazing job of keeping these together and I'll have a picture on screen. Um, so this part went super, super well and the shock cord is in there super well as well. It's been hanging from this for a while. Super strong. I'm very happy about it. Uh, because I epoxied in here a little bit by accident when I was epoxying this back for just more strength. Um, I accidentally got some on the threads which took about two hours to clean out with some dedication, acetone, and screwing the retainer on uh, a ton. So this went really well. I'm happy with this. This is the eBay which is currently assembled as you can see. This I'm happy with as well. The actual ends epoxy together really well. They're not horribly structural, so that doesn't matter. But they did come out nice. They fit nice and snug. And then I super glued this bay to it. What's going on here is this is the GPS and altimeter transmitter from Featherweight Altimeters. It's an expensive system. <clears throat> um, shipping and everything, this is almost $400. Uh, it's super overkill, but uh, it's pretty much just probably going to get zip tied in there. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, it's light, it's small, it's not going to adjust around like too much. There's not much space for it to go. Uh, the actual motor casing that I'm going to be using is this 3 grain from uh, Cesaroni. Uh, the motor is currently in California. A friend of mine took the shipment for me. Just 3 grain. Uh, I think it's an I-147 like motor or something like that. Has something like 350 newton seconds of total impulse. Next is the mid-body tube. This doesn't have a parachute or anything. I'm doing single deployment for my L1, but it does have the spot for the cameras. I do have my two cameras here. They are both Runcam 5 Oranges. I've tested these. I have decent settings that I'm going to be using. 1080p, 60fps. If I want, like, they just slide in here like this, and they see out the front, and in turn see out the hole. Uh, files for these will be in my... The Patreon link for this. So if you're my patron of any level, you'll be able to get these files. Uh, and then this is the actual mirror that goes on the outside right here, like that, and it looks down. But there are three mounting holes, and they are actually keyed. The mounting holes on this side are closer together, so I can't... Do... If you ignore the fact there are giant holes in the front, you can't do this backwards. That's the camera system. I'm really happy about how it's turned out. And then finally, I have the nose cone. Uh, this was super easy to assemble. Paint actually largely went well. This was the best painted piece for a while until I went to put the clear coat and it all peeled up and screwed up. And you can see like blotching here. It's a rough texture. This is not even the same color. It's, it's gross. It's horrible. It's, this is in there super strong. And then I have a 9 inch and a 12 inch Nomex cloth for my parachute just in case. And I have a 40 inch, 48 inch parachute. That's kind of big for this rocket. Um, a 36 inch probably would have done fine. I'd rather go a little big, honestly. I'm being very conservative with this flight, as you can imagine. I'm using a relatively th low thrust motor. I'm only going about 2,300, 2,400 feet. So I guess really the next talking point is, you know, what's the flight really going to look like? So the goal is with that I-147 whatever motor, it should be going to about 2,300 feet. It's about a three minute flight time, I believe, 100 and... 180 seconds? So that's 160, I think, actually. It was, it was something like two and a half minutes. I think it was 160 seconds. Might have been longer. Either way, I'll correct it on screen. We'll talk about it during the flight. Of course, it'll have GPS and it is uh, single deploy. So I'm probably gonna put a bit of tape or something over this so it's on there really tight. I might take a bit of shock cord. There's space on the side of this in the tube. As you can see, I might run some shock cord through that and attach it to the eye bolt on or the slip ring on here. Uh, just so in the event it decides to pop out, 
it's not going to fly off onto its own and lose, get lost. Uh, obviously, the mo the parachute's going to get direct mounted to the slip ring. The parachute's going to direct mount to this. It's going to go into the Nomex. Um, and then depending, I might actually add some shock cord that ties down to this lower part, the non-slip part, just in case this decides to pop out. It can slip past here. Single deploy. So that's just generally kind of what it's going to look like. Uh, these are all the parts. I'm happy with it so far. It's an ugly rocket, but I achieved the important parts, which was a strong build. I have straight fins and everything went to, everything fits together. Any sort of tiny adjustments, like if I need to sand a bit on here, I can do that. That's not a major issue. Um, again, files for this and the fin alignments, which should work on really any 2.6 inch. Those will be available on my Patreon. That's the video. It's really hot out here and I have a lot of stuff to do before I head out tomorrow.